All right. I think we're going to get started. Um, I assume everything's okay. We've got Kevin Nielsen working in the background, uh, helping us make sure that this webinar is up and running right. And uh, we appreciate him. My name is Brett Moore, I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Finicity. I'm joined by some pretty awesome people here at Finicity, people who are very well informed and connected to some pretty relevant conversations that I think we're going to have today. Uh, first, I want to introduce Lynn Sheck. She is the Senior VP of Enterprise and Strategic Sales. Lynn, welcome. Hello. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate your uh, your time and attention. Uh, we also have with us Lisa Kimball, our Senior VP of Product and Strategic Programs here at Finicity 2 as well. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Excited to be here. Yeah, it probably won't be the first time, the last time that I get the L's mixed up here just because of my brain. So Lisa, Lynn, but we're ha happy to have you both here. And um, and as everyone who is joining us knows, uh, we're all participating in uh, being good global citizens and uh, we're all broadcasting from our own unique uh, places. And most of them, I assume, are home. Uh, as you can see for me, a little bit of home behind me. Um, I even have some yellow shoes that, to join me from Finicity as well. Um, I'm, I'm pretty lonely around here, but uh, so I do have some shoes to join me. And if you aren't aware, we will be giving out some uh, shoes. And uh, I, I believe four, we have four different sort of talk segments that we want to chat about. And I think at the end of each segment, we will be uh, announcing um, winners of some pretty awesome shoes so uh, as as you know and um they and and that's and it's the only qualification is is that you are participating that that you're here so you don't have to wait all the way to the end so um but uh it has been an eventful few weeks if not a couple of months i think for a lot of people not just because of the social ramifications of uh, a lot of interesting things happening. But even just prior to that, the, the markets uh, and how they have adapted to um, uh, the rates, uh, mortgage rates and, uh, and whatnot. So uh, we are happy to have this particular webinar to in place of of NBA tech, which most of us were not able to, or no one is able to attend, but uh, most of us yeah, having to come up with some unique uh, scenarios um, here uh, to accommodate. But, uh, you know, I think this is a great alternative. So let's get talking about uh, mortgage and rates, digital transformation, and where what's going on in the marketplace today. So, um, so the first thing I wanted to do was to, you know, let's start by going in over what's happened over the last few weeks. Um, refinances have been up 400% or more uh, year over year and 55% from the last week of February, which is uh, really interesting. I, I'm curious, Lisa, uh, let's start there. I mean, what has this meant for lenders? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been really an unbelievable ride, uh, I think, uh, as most of us would agree. So um, we saw low rates, which meant uh, the mortgage volume, as you just mentioned, went, um, went screaming through the roof. And right on the heels of that, uh, most of us have moved all of our teams to working from home. And uh, at the same time, now we're starting to keep an eye toward what are the economic changes that are upcoming? Um, and uh, you know, how do we serve consumers in this changing market? So each one of those on their own is very challenging to respond to. And so to have all of it going on at the same time is makes for very interesting times. Um, what it really makes me think about is that during times like this where there's a lot of volatility, meaning um, you know, wild changes in volumes and approach, it's even more important to have processes that are able to scale um, and essentially can be done anywhere. Um, so uh, lenders right now who've already invested in adopting processes that are flexible, scalable, um, they're going to be at a substantial advantage right now. 
Um, we're seeing um, rates changing quickly, um, so closing loans as fast as possible, keeping those leads um, hot all the way through the closing of the loan uh, is really important. So I think uh, while it's a challenging time, I also think it's an opportunity for lenders who are able to be flexible and to respond to the challenges here to have a substantial advantage. Yeah, Lynn, any thoughts on that? Um, in terms of the challenge of the last few weeks, I'll, t I'll take the, um, I don't know, madness, a lot more gray hair. I hear all the men are growing beards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'll, take the, I'll take the light answer because I think Lisa answered it really well. Yeah, there's a lot of changes, a lot, a lot of things uh, to, 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 to really deal with, and and I think this speaks to a lot of the flexibility that that lenders are really having to rethink if they, if they haven't already put some of those processes in place. But um, you know, and we've been talking about trying to go digital for years now. This isn't a you a new concept, um, but over the last few weeks, I think we've really so you can see some of this starting to pay off for some of those lenders who either are trying to go down this digital uh, route and they're trying to do digital or there are even some who are a little bit further down the road where they have actually become digital. And I think you're seeing that pay off in varying uh, ways. And, and I want to ask you, Lynn, what are, what are people doing right now to accommodate for some of these changes? Yeah, I, th I think what's interesting, you're exactly right, the um, doing versus kind of being more digital is certainly something we've talked about in the past. You know, right now, the lenders have to um, reduce their contact with their customers, somehow still service them well. And, and we can see that for, for the lenders that we work with that are highly digital, they have certainly um, done gangbusters in terms of volume. So from where we sit, we see kind of the front end of the funnel and, and we can see that our most digital lenders have done uh, increases in volume that were bigger than what we're seeing the market average being. So I think it's been a real advantage, um, you know, being able to flex um, using your digital capabilities is certainly um, a, a true um, leg up for the lenders that were prepared for that. Um, and, and I actually think that, that given everything that's been happening, this is a bit of a fundamental shift. I don't think we'll go back to mortgage lending, let alone everything else in our lives and doing it the way we did. And I'm not a futurist by any extent, but it seems like we've all figured out new ways to work. Some of them are harder. Some of them work just fine. And, and I think we'll see a lot of um, a fun, just a fundamental shift in how business um, is conducted, in, including mortgage lending and other types of lending. Um, and it, it would, and for either one of you, I mean, what, what, how are these lenders handling these high volumes, and you know, what is it that it's making the difference for them? I can, I can jump in there and uh, Lisa can comment as well, but I think that um, the digital um, the digital opportunity gives the lender uh, the ability to actually flex. There's still people processes in, engaged in much of the mortgage lending experience for lenders and that there's um, certainly some some bottlenecks there with the kind of volumes that we've seen. Um, but if you are really dependent on the people processes, you could not have capacity planned around something like the last few weeks. Um, you might have thought you were ready for, you know, spring home buying season being very busy, but you could not have accommodated um, on a human capacity standpoint um, to the level that we've seen in terms of the spike. Yeah. Lisa, yeah, anything was, uh, you'd add there? Yeah, I think, Lynn, um, you're absolutely right there. And um, <clears throat> in addition to um, challenges around ramping up capacity sufficiently to handle the volumes that we've seen, you know, right on the tail of that, um, organizations had to shift um, and essentially send the, work the workforce um, home. And so um, having your capacity be really tied up in those manual processes is very challenging. Um, whereas if you're using some digital verification, that transition to work from home has been easier. Yeah. 
Well, and I think this leads us into really a conversation that is central to digital mortgage, and that's really the, the customer or, or the consumer, or the borrower, this consumer experience and what that is. But before I jump in there, I'm going to give away a first pair of shoes, and uh, I'm going to ask Kevin it, if uh, if he has a name for me. I, I haven't seen one yet, but I wanted to make sure we get someone some really cool swag. <laughs> Sporting some swag here, I still. But uh, do people still wear shoes. <laughs> yeah, being my more slippers are getting out. a little worn out. <laughs> we need some yellow slippers or something. If it was warmer outside, and for those who don't know, we're mountain time, so um, we where it's a little bit cooler still here in early spring. So uh, uh, hopefully, it starts to warm up here, and, and maybe I will be wearing less shoes here come to soon. But I wanted to uh, tell Alan. Magide, so is our first winner. So just congratulations to you. Uh, Kevin will communicate with you and uh, allow for you to, to get some shoes and they'll get sent over to you. So uh, glad you're with us. Um, when we talk about this consumer experience, you know, <laughs> the, uh, this consumer experience is, uh, you know, the consumers have always been driving innovation. They've been the ones pushing for in, in creating demand. And so, you know, when we f finding the right lender when rates are low matters a lot, but I really want to ask the two of you, how easily do borrowers move through the origin origination process when there are high volumes, which is a unique situation that we've been having lately? Uh, I love the question just because the term um, kind of right lender I think is really a mix of um, the digital tools I want to make the process uh, easy and um, efficient um, and uh, readily comprehensible and uh, the human I want when I don't understand it. Um, it's a big transaction. I don't do this often as a borrower. Um, and so I think the um, lenders that are really succeeding at digital have found this mix of how can they use digital, digital and what tools they can they make available and then how can they um, have a human intervene when needed to make the borrower comfortable. And you're gonna have some things that maybe have to fall in one bucket or the other, but again, to be successful, if you're mixing the two of those and it is flexible to, to be more digital for those that want it and more human-based for those that want it, I think it gives a real opportunity for the lender to meet the borrower wherever they are. Um, they are demanding new processes and um, they're using lenders that provide those new processes. I mean, we've seen at least, um, I've seen and just working with um, partners and prospects, um, at least one lender saying, you don't need to see us to work your mortgage from end to end. We can handle your business from beginning to end and you don't need to think about coming in anywhere. And at this time, right, giving that flexibility and giving that level of comfort, I think is tremendous. Yeah. yeah. And Lynn, I think when you um, consider the consumer experience with a lender who um, can make that statement um, and has experience doing that um, versus lenders who are working to retrofit um, some of the parts of the process so that it can be contactless. Um, it's just a really uh, different experience for a consumer. And I think we'll continue to see consumers move toward um, lenders who are able to be automated and contactless, essentially. You know, I think this might be a good time for us to maybe talk about the, I mean, we talk about how the consumers drive the experience. I mean, they're ultimately creating the demand. They are digital. Some are highly digital natives. Um, but they continue to push this and create a uh, demand for a digital processes and lenders who are um, lenders who are doing this migrating in this direction or those who already have are have, have are really capturing uh, an opportunity to either meet or exceed the expectations of consumers and these uh, digital borrowers and uh, so maybe this is a chance for us to talk a little bit about the mindset of, of lenders who are either going digital uh, and or those who have become digital. Uh, and I wanna make sure there's a unique difference there. Those who are uh, going digital are those that are uh, trying to adapt specific or 
uh, you know, small uh, niche processes and they're trying to react, maybe it's digital um, documentation or maybe it's digital verifications, maybe it's digital, you know, whatever that might be. But those who have actually become digital have encompassed this digital culture. It's now a part of who they are and they are truly putting the consumer, that digital consumer at the center of everything that they do. Um, so I wanted to ask you, I mean, what is the mindset of a lender who is either going digital or has become digital with, uh, you know, what is that mindset? Yeah, I think um, uh, one of the things that we see really clearly in lenders who are um, having a lot of success with their uh, digital processes is a top-down focus. So um, really thinking about this migration to digital as an organizational change initiative. It requires um, paying attention to people, um, incentives, training and communication, as well as the processes and of course the underlying technology. Um, but thinking about it from an organizational level rather than um, picking up pieces and parts and just assuming that um, you know, loan officers, processors, and ultimately consumers as well will, uh, will move in that direction. Um, versus creating a, a full program around it and really paying a lot of attention throughout the organization. Yeah. Thoughts yeah, on that? I, you deal, yeah, with, this, you deal with this every day with uh, lenders and all of their various locations across this digital spectrum. So I'm interested. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Um, it is exactly what Lisa said is that you can't just think about um, the technology and that you have to think about the end-to-end -end process. And I think pay um, particular attention to the people side of it. Um, getting that, um, you know, top-down and, and having, getting the top-down focus and the top-down communication. This isn't a project that just should be handled with the people that are doing the digital mortgage application, for example, that really needs to be well socialized across the entire organization for you to uh, have success in changing the way um, the whole organization is thinking about digital. Taking away fear of change, for example, because um, people may be resistant to it, wondering what it means for their jobs, just communicating really openly about what, what the opportunities are for the organization, um, for their business, but, but truly looking at the end-to-end -end process and not just thinking they're slipping in a piece here and a piece there. Yeah, and then I like what you said about thinking about the opportunity, and I think um, it's important to think about that in the context of the loan officer um, and the processor as well. So what's the advantage <clears throat> for people to make this change? Um, in what concerns and questions do they have about how to get there um, and uh, increasing their success rather than feeling like it's taken a step backward? And I remember one of our most successful digital lenders saying, yeah, and it's not just that you get to go out and announce this project once and you're done. He yeah. talks about it every week, week after week, and they've been at it for many months now, and they still have to communicate at a high degree. He recently traveled to one of his regions and found himself in a meeting that was ostensibly about another topic. And all these questions came up about kind of the, the, the digitization and what it meant and uh, just realizing you have to continue to educate and continue to communicate. You know, it's not just one and done as a, as a technology project. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you both talked about that because something that we have done internally here at Finissi, we've outlined five critical success factors for any lending institution that is trying to um, create, uh, you know, maximize market share, uh, really meet or exceed the expectations of consumers and, and a lot of other things. But uh, one of those things is that this one critical success factor is that it has to start at the top. There has to be a mindset that starts with this leadership team and that it is infused into IT and that everybody is in sync and then it, it uh, is pushed throughout the organization, which ultimately creates adoption. And it's that adoption that leads to um, uh, more um, streamlined processes. We're getting higher productivity. We're getting, um, you know, your cost per loan. And uh, you were actually seeing the, the, those benefits turn into become real, uh, very real and realities of uh, losing, cutting days off of your, 
uh, verification processes, for example, or cutting days off of the total um, uh, origination process on the front end. So a lot of that is very real. This isn't hypothetical. People are doing it there and they're experiencing all sorts of benefits across the spectrum. So um, I think that uh, th that's really important to point out here is that it is a very important critical success factor. Um, I wanted to ask real quick, what is what does this digital mortgage mortgage look like now? I uh, went hit on this earlier when I when I think about it, that one maybe one of the most important components is that um, it it doesn't remove um, human contact and um, and the human element, right? There's still um, there's still a need for um, people to help with questions and ensure that the process goes smoothly for borrowers. Um, so when we talk about digital mortgage, um, it's not a full replacement of any humans in the process. It's just augmenting um, some of the portions so that uh, the people who are engaged are able to spend their time doing education with borrowers, um, helping them to assess what the best approach is for their particular case, um, and just stripping out some of the, the uh, repetitive functions that can take a long time. Yeah, and, and I think most, a lot of those repetitive functions, not only not that interesting work for, for some of the people that process mortgages, but I think also some of them are the, the um, requirements to kind of ping the borrower on, a, on an ongoing basis. And that's not that great for the, the experience either. So when you've got your, your, your best human capital, as you said, working at the highest level, then it's just better for both sides. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the other thing that comes to mind um, is really the impact for the consumer. So just making a process that's a lot easier. Um, I like to think about, uh, you know, being maybe uh, initiating your loan and then taking a week on vacation. And so um, if you could do your digital verification from your beach chair um, and keep things moving, that's certainly a great advantage for consumers versus having to wait until they get back or, you know, um, otherwise try to put their hands on um, paper documentation or something along those lines. So just making it really um, uh, easy so the consumer can do it anytime, anywhere, and it doesn't take a huge amount of effort from them is, is another really critical element. And I think that will continue to, um, to improve as, uh, as digitization becomes more widely adopted. Can anybody say work from home? <laughs> so uh, that was a literally my internet just went psh, gone. So my apologies, and um, I think we're on to uh, just chatting here about digital verification. If I'm right, so um, my apologies for dropping out. <laughs> but clearly, clearly not too much of a hiccup here. Did we get a chance to announce person who won some shoes? No, we just left that for you. Oh yeah, man, thank you so much. <laughs> I did I did not want to forget. So Michael uh Nagel, Michael Nagel. I think that's an L. Uh so as opposed to an I. So and, and as opposed to Nagi, but I think it's Michael Nagel who some shoes coming your way and and, and Kevin Kevin will be in touch with you to get you some some shoes. So we appreciate you being with us and and talking uh about this. So um, so I think we jumped right into digital verification and some of the flexibility. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, with all of the moving parts of mortgage, how does digital verification fit in? And, and ultimately, you know, why, why should we care? Why is it important? Um, I'll, I'll kick this one off, Lisa, if that's all right. I think, um, if the borrower is, uh, in a process where they're uh, providing their information and more information in an easy fashion earlier in the process, I think that the lender has the opportunity to create a stickiness um, with that client. If they well, have a well thought out um, interface um, that guides the borrower through step by step, what you're looking for, you know, on down the line, you all know this, the steps better than I do probably, um, then I think you can create a real stickiness. Um, and I think if you're able to verify the data that the borrower is giving you earlier on in the process, then it also helps you as the lender to determine the right product more quickly. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's really important to determine um, 
you're able to better determine if you need an off ramp. Um, not everybody's going to make it through a, a fully digital process. Even the most digital of lenders will tell you they have a well built off ramp if the customer gets stuck or um, they can't, um, based on the information that's provided, can't provide, uh, can't supply a, a solution right away, need to gather more, need to talk to the borrower, et cetera. You have to have a well designed off ramp. But I, I do think it cre can create more stickiness on the front end and then also um, get you as the lender to better decisions about kind of what you're going to be able to offer that borrower if you're actually verifying the information um, and not just always taking all of it stated. Yeah, any thoughts there, Lisa? Uh, I think Lynn really nailed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, we definitely see borrowers um, with that stickiness to a lender, right, um, who've got, uh, you know, essentially a significant amount of the, of the loan approved um, and documented in advance and um, also a real smooth experience for the consumer. And that certainly helps them to not want to continue to shop that loan and, um, you know, they, they tend to stick with the lender. Well, I, I, I think we could use this opportunity. I, I want to take the next minute here just to explain for those who have not seen it. Again, we don't want to assume that how far down the road you are on your digital strategy, uh, although many of you may already be familiar, but we're going to pull up one example of a digital verification for you. This is a digital verification of income and employment. This is just one example uh, and, and the point here I want to make is just to show you how simple this can be, how fast it can be, and ultimately what a uh, highly engaging and satisfying experience this can be for your digital consumers. Again, you're trying to either meet or exceed their expectations, but uh, up on the screen, you should be able to see an example of income, digital income and employment verification. As you know, this is a core part, a core piece, along with verification of assets, income and employment uh, are, are very critical in their necessary processes is through the origination. And uh, as you can see here, an example of, of uh, this is something that would be sent to a, um, to a, a borrower, a digital a borrower in a, through an email. It can also be an experience where they could get this as a part of their uh, point, of uh, point of sale system, POS system, um, that, is, that walks them through an existing flow. Um, so uh, 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 different ways that you could imagine the uh, consumer being engaged here, but they simply start with uh, opportunity to read about some terms, service, but this is just to explain to them, you can have uh, some customization here, you can have your own Ah, uh, this is Acme lending. You can have your own uh, tailored experience, if you will, so it doesn't seem like you're getting two different experiences versus, uh, uh, you know, through one provider versus another. Uh, so there are some some of those tailor uh, opportunities here. But they get started. They click on uh, get started here. They're going to go and they are going to upload a pay stub. So they're going to browse for that particular image on their computer. In this case, that's how, what we're doing here, but this can also be done by just simply taking a camera and a mobile device and taking a snapshot and uh, the, that digital uh, image is uploaded as well. In this case, we're gonna search for it. We find it on my computer, I, uh, which the pay stub that I downloaded from my provider and uh, I submit that pay stub, then it tells me I got one more step. I now need to verify uh, the information from the pay stub with bank deposit information. And so I will be taken to a screen where I can type in uh, and start selecting my institution. Uh, and as you start typing, it will uh, find that institution. It click on the one that I'm looking for. In this case, it's uh, Wells. I'm going to use my own username and, and uh, password to log in there. And uh, a token is exchanged for uh, security purposes. I then get to, it finds the accounts and I'm ultimately looking for the account where my paycheck is being deposited into. Click on that particular account. It says, hey, look, we found the checking account. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to, um, 
go ahead and uh, select. Yeah, I think we're actually looking at um, where a scenario where this is going to be deposited into multiple accounts, but uh, I would log into whatever those accounts are. So, so these are the accounts that I found that are relevant to that particular pay stub. And uh, from here, I click on these, these are the ones that I'm using. I say, yes, I'm going to confirm this one I'm looking for. Select yes. Yeah, so which accounts are relevant to my paycheck? And uh, I will click to check those that are relevant and then hit continue. And ultimately, we come to an end. It processes and is done for a complete experience there. Um, so you can see my point here is, is that this digital verification, very quick, very easy. This is something uh, a consumer can do uh, and take two minutes, three minutes uh, of, of spare time on a lunch hour, in the evenings, you know, on the go. Um, we are just trying to make every effort to meet and exceed expectations there for the consumer by being where they are. And um, so a very fluid experience. Any thoughts from that, Lisa, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Lisa and Lynn, on just ultimately how this becomes a win-win for both the lenders as well as the digital consumers, digital borrowers? Yeah, I think one of the most powerful things um, to keep in mind there is that, um, so the borrowers uploaded uh, a pay stub at their loan application time. And once we've matched that to the income stream from the transactions, um, then if their loan, you know, let's say they're just early stage shopping, right, happens. Um, and so it's a little bit delayed um, when they are actually um, starting to um, finish the loan process. And it's so re-engaging the borrower, getting additional documents. Um, as a lender, you could just refresh the report. Um, we've already attached the pay stub to the transaction flow. Um, and you can re-verify without needing the borrower to go back, dig in again, and find an, an additional set of documents. So just really creating a lot of convenience um, and speed um, associated with having the verification be there digitally. Yeah. What's the value of this in, in one day? If you look at the, you know, the amount of savings or benefits here, I mean, what, what's the value of doing something like this, a digital verification? Uh, to the overall mortgage origination process? Well, there's certainly some industry uh, numbers around uh, how much it costs by day to underwrite a mortgage. Um, uh, and you can, you can look at those numbers, but my suggestion would be that for a lender that they really do use, um, use their own metrics. You know, what kind of time has been saved? What, what impact has this had on your pull through rate of loans, what is your borrower satisfaction um, with respect to that. Um, and the more detailed metrics that you have about your process today, and then as if you're moving to digitize piece of it, uh, pieces of it, then you can compare it to tomorrow. The more detailed metrics you have, if you can get them all the way down to the loan officer level, to processor level, underwriter level, then I think you, um, you can better make that uh, assessment of, of what it means. I mean, Despite the dollar savings and the time savings, you know, it, there, there's certainly cost across all of that and, and fewer competitors that are getting into that customer, less time for that, that consumer to shop around and think they're going to go find something else better while they're waiting on you. So the more, more you speed it up and the more you can measure how you've sped it up and what the opportunities and gaps are to continue to do that, I think the more uh, efficiently you can you know, go through the whole process. Terrific. I want to, before we jump into the next section, I want to <clears throat> offer up another pair of shoes here to, um, it is Allie McCanny. Allie McCanny, Hello. Kevin will be in touch with you. Congratulations. Thanks for being with us and uh, chatting with us. I want to jump into the next topic here. There's been a recent FHFA notice about employment verification and, uh, and how that's being handled by a bank statement with a payroll deposit or a recent year-to-date pay stub. So some interesting things, uh, response coming out from FHA, FHFA, but uh, what does that mean for everyone right now? Lynn, your thoughts? 
Um, I think from the Finicity perspective, we have long thought that um, as you demonstrated the verification of income and employment solution, that being able to identify the income stream in the transaction uh, data and then being able to go in and refresh that and see that yes, indeed, I did get paid last Friday as expected and the same amount as usual. Um, and to be able to do that right before close made a ton of sense. Um, it seems like you, you want that extra validation on the front end, but, but really seeing if the money's coming in or not is, is kind of the most, uh, most critical piece of it. Um, so I think that, that um, it, it, it opens up some opportunities. Um, do, we, do we have those fully assessed? No, and I'll let Lisa comment on that, but um, I think it can really open up some opportunities um, to be able to um, really start using the data that's available and that is being, you know, able to be pulled immediately, right? This is instant. This is exactly what was posted yesterday or on Friday that you can see my pay stub. So it is as real time as, as it can possibly be. Yeah, um, I think uh, one of the interesting things that's come out of all these challenges, we're hearing anecdotally from lenders that, um, you know, the uh, process of making a phone call to an employer um, has been particularly difficult right now as um, companies, again, shift to working from home. So maybe the office line um, to the HR person isn't where you'll find them right now. And also so many organizations are focused on their disaster recovery and business continuity plans um, and uh, may not be able to turn around this kind of um, verification uh, as quickly as they did a few weeks ago. So um, we're working very closely with, um, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to really understand what's at the heart of that FHFA notice and um, uh, understand how we can support the um, uh, improvement of that process so that it's not a stumbling block to uh, getting loans closed. Um, I think it is uh, interesting and kind of exciting. As Lynn mentioned, we've, we've um, uh, felt like this is the direction uh, that, that the industry is going for quite some time. And there's a, just an extra push right now because the current processes are becoming really challenging given uh, everything that's going on. Yep. Well, I think there's a lot of change for, for everybody you know, happening right now. I mean, the, the response from FHFA is just one example, but you know, even within lenders and borrowers, um, you know, being able to do a simple income and employment process, uh, you know, done digitally, I think is, is going to have a lot, a lot of, um, it just, it just changes our approach to origination and changes our engagement, uh, experience with the consumers. And so I want to be sensitive with time. And so with that, I want to offer up another pair of shoes here to is that's a good question kevin do you have one for me mm -hmm. uh shantanu sharma is our next winner so shantanu sharma appreciate you being with us and kevin will be in touch with you for so for some shoes and uh so you will uh receive those uh really soon and uh, and I assume you're going to be home when you receive it. <laughs> uh, nobody, you'll be able to get those. You won't be like the Amazon you know, conspiracy and you know, people dropping stuff off and stealing it off your shelf, uh, off your. They'll uh, stay really clean for a while because people aren't wearing them just indoors. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I want to get to our last section here. So ultimately, what should lenders be doing? This is a. Uh, important and everybody's on a different place on this spectrum of digital transformation and trying to respond or get ahead of of the expectations for digital consumers so uh, you know with all this background where should lenders be headed lynn lisa yeah i think my first comment would be um uh, to to try to move with urgency like right now i understand you're completely swamped, right? But to try to really begin to get your arms around it. And, and while we've differentiated between doing a little bit of digital and actually being digital, the point is you got to tip your toe in the water someplace and there's easy ways to do that. Um, we are definitely in this era of an empowered consumer. They have really high experience expectations and they're going to choose companies that um, provide that level of um, uh, experience that they're looking for. So, 
figure out a way to start someplace. And um, I talked about kind of revamping your process end to end, and that can be a really big project, but you can also bite it off in smaller chunks. And, and again, as I said, to dip your toe into the water um, so that you can at least get started. Yeah. And who should be championing this at the organization? Where, where should this, who's gonna own this? I think, um, you know, as we uh, probably touched on a little bit, it really needs to be um, the, the broad leadership team, um, the top of the house in the organization. And you really should think about it as a strategic initiative um, with some clear goals uh, defined, but um, much broader than, oh, you know, there's just a piece of technology to get inserted here. Um, so it does take a real broad um, set of leadership and championing. Yeah. Uh, and I know we brought this up earlier and I want to just remind you, if you, you do want to understand and learn a little bit more about what Finicity's five critical success factors are and how they, you can uh, uh, think about those things, implement those things into your existing strategy uh, or help you even get started as to what your strategy should look like, please let us know and reach out to us and uh, we will um, share those, happily share those with you. Um, but um, you know, with all the uncertainties in the market, uh, uh, what can lenders depend on uh, being true now and maybe even a year from now? It, it, even though the market seems a little bit up and down and questionable, but you know, what are some of those things we should be um, uh, focusing on or potentially could stick around for us? You know, in the work that uh, my team does um, out in the marketplace, um, we've heard a lender say, you know, my customers don't request this online stuff. They, they want to talk to my loan officers. Um, they don't need an online application. They don't need uh, much in terms of online loan management. I can't prioritize this kind of a project. I'm just not seeing the need for it. And, and my reaction to that was, you know what, he's right. He's absolutely right because those customers that are coming to him aren't needing those kinds of services, aren't needing um, and, and requesting um, the digital experience. Um, the question is how many of those customers are going to keep coming his way and where are the rest of them going? So I, I think it's really just um, understanding how the market is shifting and while you might not hear it directly from the people that are coming through a traditional path, you have to really look at what does that pipeline look like for the long run? Yeah. <clears throat> Lisa? And I think, um, increasingly, um, the, the use of technology is going to be a real differentiator. So, um, you know, I don't think any of us could have um, uh, stood in January and even anticipated what was coming our way over the, over the uh, last couple of months. And so just building in um, that kind of flexibility and scalability um, so that you can react to whatever's going on um, is going to continue to be a differentiator for lenders. Yeah, it, it will be a differentiator. It is uh, heavily, and it, you know, if you haven't already felt that through our conversations, and if you haven't seen it in the marketplace, but to Lynn's point, you know, you've got certain people who probably will always come to you because of that relationship, but ultimately you have to be thinking about those consumer expectations and consumer demand, um, they will continue to go more and more digital in their lives. And uh, so if they're not coming to you, they've, they've gone, they're going to be going somewhere else and they're going to be looking for a different experience ultimately. So, and that really leads us to the end here. I'm going to ask for some final thoughts um, from everybody. But before I do that, we're going to uh, um, offer up our last pair of shoes here. And uh, Kevin, I'm going to go over here and it is Corey McGuire. So Corey McGuire, we appreciate you being with us today and, and chatting with us. And hopefully you are always already on that digital transformation curve. But uh, before we sign off here, Lisa, Lynn, any thoughts on digital transformation, whether you're here or what's going on in the marketplace today and the recent announcements from FHFA, uh, any, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I just, well, first want to thank everybody for spending the time and, uh, and taking a few minutes with us for a little virtual chat. Um, and uh, just want to make sure that as you think about this, 
um, it can feel really daunting. And in fact, the market and the things we're experiencing right now can feel really daunting. But times like this also bring great opportunity. And so um, if you just switch that mindset around and think about the ways that you can really leverage um, all the change that's going on in order to um, come out of this in a stronger position, um, it can be a really interesting um, way to consider how to best serve consumers and uh, you know, how to continue growing your business. Yeah, I would, I would second what Lisa said. Thanks for everybody's time today. We, uh, we really appreciate uh, coming in and congratulations to all our Yellow Shoe winners. We look forward when we are all back together again in some city for some conference of seeing some of those shoes walking around. Um, I would say um, just uh, along the lines of what Lisa said that I think when you have this kind of a a crisis, um, it brings real clarity, right? It brings real clarity to what um, your business priorities should be, where you're spending your time, what really should get done, um, and what really doesn't need to get done. Um, and so I think it's a, it's, it is truly an opportunity to take advantage of, um, of that clarity and make the changes to keep your business viable and keep it growing um, as, as the days and weeks and months go by. Well, I, I hope that anyone who's participated with us uh, will think about Finicity in every part of your digital transformation process uh, as, as a partner. Uh, we will continue to help and encourage and lift and point people in the right direction. Um, again, if you'd like to learn more about some of our critical success factors in this digital transformation uh, around digital verifications, please reach out to us. Um, and uh, we would love to share those with you. And uh, we appreciate everybody being a, a part of this conversation today. And, and uh, um, uh, thanks for bearing with my work from home experience on dropping off and, and uh, but uh, say again. I said, everyone stay well, stay yeah, safe, stay, stay well. And, 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 but take a walk, don't get stir crazy. So do <laughs> get out, so. Um, thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kevin, for making all this stuff happen and uh, your work in the background and shoes to come for those who, who, uh, who were the winners. So look forward to chatting with you real soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.